Hey guys, Insomni here with some more AFK Arena. Today we're back with the Faction accounts and we are on the Wilder account. 29-12 is where we left off. Last week we just did some summons for the account, so we got a lot more heroes, a lot more fodder. Today we're going to get into the campaign push. As you can see over the last week, got about 14,000 diamonds there, got a couple elite stones. So we're going to go ahead and take a quick look at the team. As you can see here, starting to add more five-star heroes, which is absolutely amazing. Do need a couple more copies of Gorvo to build him. And then we're going to be looking for Pippa or Kaz or Cirrus because the, we're running out of Wilders, as you can see, um, to build as we continue to max out these heroes. Really, really hoping that Almus gets a rework sooner than later um, so we can actually use him. I, I want to see him built and I want to see him good. Um, overall, right now, he dies very, very early when it comes to the campaign stages. So let's go ahead and get into the summon. So here we do have a couple stones. So five elite hero stones in total. Wilders, we got nobody. Unfortunately, nobody. But we did get a Hendrick and we got a Daemon. So very, very good there. A couple rare stones as well. 24 in total. Giving us a lot more food to continue to build up Gorvo. Unlocking a signature item hopefully at this point. So it looks like in addition, this is going to give us a couple more stars. Looks like another star here for Solas, so that will take her up to three, which is very, very nice. And then, of course, Brutus will add a second star to him, which is going to be really good for the fusion heroes. We're also looking to build Taylene on all of these accounts. We need three. Three copies of Taylene, and she will be completely ascended. I do not have her ascended on any faction accounts at this point. So that would be the very, very first one we have ascended. As you can see here, 22 cards. So we're going to do two summons for Taylene. Again, we need three copies. So the first pull does not bring any copies. We get a little bit of artifact and some EXP. Copy number two brings us one more copy of Taylene. So we are one more closer, as well as a rare card there as well. So we are two copies away from Taylene as we continue to get more cards. Two copies is all we need. Very, very cool to see. All right, so let's get into the summons. We have, again, 13,000 diamonds. We have 20 scrolls, and we do have some faction scrolls as well as the companion points. So we'll go ahead. We'll use our companion points first. Hopefully, we can pull some elites. Three rares there, so not too good on that pull. Second pull just gives us another three rare cards. All of our hero coins we are saving at this time. Um, because remember, Albedo and Ions are coming out very, very soon for the Dimensionals. So we are banking everything. We are banking all of our resources so we can ensure that both of these accounts continue to build the Dimensional Heroes. First pull there, we just get a couple more rare cards. I'm hoping we pull the Wilder. Be really, really cool to see a Wilder on the Wilder account. Double Elites there which is a copy of Pippa. There is Pippa. Very, very cool to see her out of a regular summons. I did just drop her into the wish list. So we got a Pippa and we got a Scarath. So very, very good. Mauler team, Scarath is very powerful. Pippa, I want to see in a combination running with Tassie overall. Because remember, Pippa will prioritize Tassie's ability um, in the same formation, which is what I want to see. So there is the second copy of Taylene. It looks like we're going to add some more stars here to Scarath as we continue. So that's double stars for the Maulers already. And we did get one for the Wilders. All right, so a couple more summons here. Hoping again, fingers crossed, we get a couple copies of Wilders and get a couple more elite cards. We have a lot of heroes we're still looking to build. Another card right there, which is a copy of Rowan. Best hero, my, my favorite, personal favorite hero, Rowan, an absolute amazing hero, and another elite right there, which is a copy of Rose. So Rose and Rowan. It looks like we got probably one summon left, but we might be adding a couple more stars here. Look at that, double stars on the Light Bears, and this is how we build the accounts, guys. Takes him to three stars, so that is good there. Taking Rose to two stars really up in the damage that we can do with Soros. So we got two more summons here. I'm really hoping 
One more Elite. We need some more Wilders. Maybe another copy of Pippa would be nice. Final one is an Elite card, which is Lucius. So a lot of Light Bearers. One card on the table. We will continue with the Wilders. Hopefully it is Pippa. It is a copy of Almus. Almus definitely getting close to five stars as well. All right, so that will do it for the summons. Let's see what we got. So another, looks like another star for Almus. So again, a lot of these heroes are going to be complete with five stars very, very shortly. We have a little bit of food here. We have double Iras. So we're actually going to use Ira as food because remember, we are still building... Gorvo at this point. Gorvo is the one that we're really focused on. Javid's absolute favorite, but there is Gorvo. So this will give us his signature item. If we can get him up just a little bit higher, which we don't have any food, but you can see we have doubled to take him up to Ascended and we have another copy to go ahead and add a star onto him. Then we do have Kaz and Cirrus there as well as we unlocked Pippa. So very, very cool to see getting some more progression so looking at the oak in or the whale in we have eighteen thousand pole coins so a ton of pole coins here a ton of cards on the table as we continue to build up our team here i think i'm going to drop cirrus out at this point and throw in pippa just because i know her furniture is very very important and we will focus summon her in the future though so this will be the team as you can see, the first hero that goes to six. So essentially, if we get another copy of a furniture piece for Iran, we're going to go ahead and just max him out at nine of nine. So we can actually drop him in, swap another wild in there. And of course, we do have Taylene in this lineup as well. So we could get some three piece bonuses here. We could definitely pull some with the amount of coins that we have here. First pull, just going to be a legendary piece. Second one, there was our little red twinkle. Gives us a piece for Leica. Definitely want to see Leica in back-to-back -back furniture there. Very nice. Piece for Lorzen. So that'll give Lorzen, I believe, his three set as well. So definitely going to increase a lot of the damage that this team's putting out. Another red little twinkle there. Another mythic piece for Gorvo. Need to get him up, need to get him built. I have a couple pieces for him, I believe, at this point. I would love to see one for Eron so we could go ahead and finish him up. But that gives us four cards. So that gives us four cards there. So what I'm thinking is we could just go ahead and finish these out. So we could finish out Laika or we could finish out Eron. We could finish out a couple heroes here with their abilities. I'm thinking with four cards that we just go for, I'm thinking Eron, just because he's our main carry. I know a lot more stats is gonna make a big, big difference. So we are gonna go ahead and we are gonna max his cards out. So there is number six. We'll go ahead and swap him number seven. We got two more here. All right, and then the final one, which will bring him to nine of nine. Then we'll just start collecting our red cards again. All right, so let's smart select. There he is, boom, nine of nine, adding a lot of attack there. Wow, so that is completely maxed out. Very, very powerful ability. As you can see there, it gives him his little uh, spikes around the symbol. He is maxed out, 9 of 9. Signature item is completely maxed out. Gear is completely maxed out. So he is done. Short of a little bit more on his artifact, he is absolutely done. Look at that. Such a powerful, powerful hero. Now doing more damage than ever before, being completely built. So let's see how well he does in the campaign, 29-12. So we'll go ahead and we'll get into our campaign. So as we can see, we have the um, Graveborn and the Mauler team way ahead. We're gonna go with our regular setup here, which of course I run Eron with Leica for the formation shell, Tassian Namora for the formation shell as well. 
And then we do run Soros. Soros, if he gets his stacks up, his cleave ability can heal an absolute ton, which this one's going to be close. Let's see if Leica can take down. Oh, got it. Leica takes down Savvy. It's just like that. Very, very cool to see. 21 million, 31 million damage from Eron. Remember, he does have his maxed out furniture, meaning with that Sylvan Oath, he gets 15% more damage, which is absolutely groundbreaking. So he will put out a ton. As you can see right there, he just burned straight through a target because he does so much damage so fast. 16 seconds, 21 million damage with the help of Leica with her debuff. And of course, we do have Nomura who is providing healing and is also providing the Beguile ability. On this team, I believe I do need Nomura with her furniture because even there, Silvana hopped right on her. If we had her furniture, we could actually get her right off of there. But look at Soros, 9 million damage right out of the gate, 14 million and 16 million from Tassie, or excuse me, from Leica and from Iran. This is going to be the team comp. This is the core team comp that we run in this team. The, the only big difference here is when you fight Maulers. When you fight a hero like Brutus that has an immunity shield, super, super tough to get through, and they can actually burn through the Wilder team because of the roar. Brutus actually has a roar that'll mitigate the dodge, so you actually can't dodge targets, meaning that his whirlwind and his attacks are guaranteed to hit because you're mitigating the, um, the dodge factor that this team really, really plays into. It's so looking there, almost 28 million damage from Iran. Remember also, this is one of the only teams that the main carry, so the main damage dealer, Iran, is a is not a caster. Essentially, remember, he is a ranger, ranger class. Most of the other teams rely on Belinda, rely on Sophia. Um, Lightbearers, we do have Gwen, who is a ranger as well. And then also when it comes to the Graveborn, we deal with Oden, we deal with Isabella. Um, very, very powerful casters. But this is kind of unique because, like I said, he is a ranger and he provides a lot of crowd control and a lot of slows with a truckload of damage. As you can see there, 26 million damage. And this team has the burst damage, which really makes it effective. With a pull-in, usually we get three or four. This one's gonna be scary because of Brutus. When we pull Brutus in there, as you can see right off the bat, Brutus was banished, which is what we needed. Went to a, straight into a um, banished to a frozen, which is good. Most of the team went down there, again, due to the roar and the damage they do with the roar. Leica putting up a lot of damage, almost 20 million damage there from Leica. Just like Nomura, I feel like if we continue with Leica, if we get her nine of nine furniture, increase Leica's um, signature item to plus 30, she is going to be putting out an absolute crazy amount of damage. We know that nine of nine furniture for Leica allows her to use two arrows simultaneously. So essentially she can get the debuff on two different heroes simultaneously, making it very, very powerful when it comes to the overall damage that she can put up. Even there, I mean, most of these battles, 22 seconds there, the whole entire team is done. They usually don't last 30 seconds. So even Leica there, 14.5 million, 8 million damage healed from Nomura in that very, very short time. Not only does Nomura offer the healing ability, as we see right there, she does, her heals do turn to shields. In addition, the other big thing about Nomura is the Beguile ability. So she can actually control an enemy hero, make them attack other, other um, enemies, which is very, very cool. The only one that has a similar ability is Nomura, but Nomura does it on a mass level when she does her ultimate ability and actually has everyone attack each other. Nomura does really keep this team up. It, it's very, very nice. Even there, seven million damage in that short little burst period, bring us to 29-24. Arden might be a problematic on this one as long as we don't get the root, which it looks like we didn't. Got to sleep, he just sits there and wait. Now we have to chase Tassie around. Tassie's always one with her teleportation ability. Um, just have to track her down, actually catch her to kill her. So looking at the damage here, 22 million, even though Eron died, 14.2 million damage healed. 
So not only is Nomura doing a ton of healing, she is doing a lot of shielding. Because remember, if the hero's at max health, which has really, really helped when it comes to Saurus, it'll create a shield. As you can see right there, the entire team is shield. So Brutus didn't have an opportunity to take down Eron because of the shield that Nomura brought up. And of course, with um, Saurus doing the healing as well. Very, very good combination here. So this one, we're going to pop in Solus. We have actually dropped out Nomura. We're going to pop in Solus. A lot of players have asked, what do we think of Solus? Look at the rain of damage she is bringing down. Super, super fast. Ton of damage. 16 million, 17 million from Leica, 17 million from Eron. So sharing a lot more of the damage. With her Floral Spectre, I really feel like you need to have the, the three of nine furniture at a bare minimum. Um, just because if the Floral Spectre dies or when the Floral Spectre dies, probably better way to put it. As you can see right there, there's two up in the back. It turns into a Phantom Spectre, which continues to deal damage. So it just continues to rain spores on the entire battlefield. And remember, with her plus 30 signature item, it targets three heroes. There's the spores again. But unfortunately, with this team specifically, which she's the only one up right there, Floral Spectre killed it out. 23 million damage. But in this team specifically, um, due to the kill speed and the kill power, um, I, I really feel like she doesn't have enough time to shine or really get the Floral Spectre up to do a lot of damage. Right there, she alts. There's one target left, that's it, before she can really, really rain the AoE damage down. 17 million from Eron. They're killing the enemies essentially right now too quick. So as we continue our progression, I know our level deficit's not too crazy between here. I think we're at about 50, 50 plus levels, I think roughly. Let's take a look at it real quick. So 23 million damage there, very, very quick out the gate. So we're at 320, so 56 levels. Every stage we beat, remember, is giving them more levels. So we're 56 level deficient, deficiency on this one, which usually you run about 80 to 90. A little bit of kind of leeway, especially with an all wilder team. As we continue our progression here, pulling all the heroes together. As you can see, my task is right behind Pharrell. We get really, really good RNG on our elemental surge there. Picked up uh, Pharrell right in the middle. 27 million damage from Eron. This is the reason a lot of players build Eron first. If Eron is going to be your main carry, 110% build Eron first. You can see firsthand in so many different videos just the absolute devastating damage that he can do and the burst damage that he does on this team. 24 million, so pretty much doubling up, sometimes tripling up most of the other damage. Bring us to 29-34. Again, pulled in, look at that. Four of the enemy team leaving just one sitting all by themselves. Let's check out the damage here, 18 million. Which, so even the, the team's running well, even without Nomura. So actually putting Solus in there for the place of Nomura. There's the Floral Spectre. As you can see, Cirrus just killed it. But because of the furniture bonuses, it does stay up and still continue to do damage, which is good. So even there, 25 million from Eron. Definitely have a lot of progression to make up because we are catching right up to these faction teams. I still do have to run the Light Bears and then we will be all set to go with the faction teams for this week. As you can see, the Light Bears are just absolutely left in the dust. They are back probably about 30 stages at this point. And every faction team has pushed forward. And boss stages are just going down one after another after another. Brutus stage, I, I put Saurus on Brutus, so hopefully can mitigate some damage. Right there, we did have a good banish, which came up on Brutus. Got him down relatively early, because remember, this team has no way to get rid of his shield. So essentially, again, the immunity shield and the roar is going to destroy us because we cannot clear his shield. We just have to wait it out. Gorvo on this one, I cannot wait to have Gorvo built. As you can see, went down really early there with Eron. But look at the spores. Boom, 
just raining everywhere from Flora. Such fast, so, so much damage. Even there, 18 million damage with raining spores down on all of the enemies. So 29-39, we went from the beginning of 29 to being two thirds done with the campaign stages at this point. So we're gonna be in 30 possibly tonight because we're making a lot of progression. 2940. Got Thane, got Sears, but again, we pull everyone right in the middle. Tassie gets an early banish off. Ira goes down, which is absolutely devastating. Just the synergy of this team, absolutely flawless there. A lot of healing right there from Soros. And then that is two thirds of the way done with this chapter at this point. Savius in the bottom, which, wow. Savvy has just absolutely destroyed us. Let's see. Soros is staying up, though. Getting a shield. Got it done. Look at that. One-shotted Tassie. One-shotted Laika right out of the gate. But look at that. Solus gets it done. 22, almost 23 million damage there from those Floral Spectres and her ultimate ability. So she definitely does some damage. She, she has the ability to do quite a bit of damage. Just, again, have to keep that Floral Specter up because that is a big, big damage mitigation or damage loss if it does die and if it is not the Specter. So 27 million there from Iran. Bring us to 29-43, another Brutus stage. Soros on Brutus is, is really the only counter. As you can see, we got a Banish there. Did very, very well. The Spores are up again from our Floral Specter. Got it down. Head to head, Brutus versus Soros. As you can see there, Soros, ton of shielding, ton of healing to go ahead and take down Brutus, wait, waiting out his shield right to another Mauler stage. We'll, we'll bring down, I'm trying not to pull Brutus in with Eron. Um, that's a mistake a lot of players make. Again, Brutus will just absolutely destroy Eron, just like he did there. This one's going to be close. We've got a Spectre up with a Sleep. Got it. Again, Solus gets it done with Tassie. 26, almost 27 million damage there. Solus is performing very, very well. All right, so this one will swap back to the middle. We know um, Silvana is going to go right on Solus. Should be able to get her off relatively quick, which we do. Look at that. 13 seconds, and that stage was done. 29 million damage. Doing a ton of damage. Iran with Max Furniture just killing it very, very fast. He is destroying teams in, in a matter of seconds with the amount of damage. Even that battle, 14 seconds there. Takes out the entire team. 32 million damage in 14 seconds. Wow, that, that is crazy. And look, he comes right out, just right out of the gate. Just destroys, <laughs> obliterated the hero right in front of him. 26.91. It's almost 27 million damage on there. So this one, we're at 81. So now we're 61 level deficiency. So definitely catching up. Again, with the team, we only do run them once a week. And that is why we push quite a bit of progression because the level deficiency, we actually catch up when we're running them. I believe we're on the exact same stage or right around the stage that the Graveborn team got stuck at. Pulled in the Dwarves, pulled in Mario, pulled in everyone to a sleep. There's the reigning Floral Spectre. Again, flawless synergy on the team's part. 30 million, 18 million damage there from Solus. And I believe we just pushed ahead of the Wilder team. This one is very, very risky too because we pulled in Thorin. Um, Thorn has the ability to kill very, very quick, especially heroes that are stacked around him. That is the Thorn Cheese. 29 million damage there, so definitely pulling out some heavy, heavy damage with this team. Dwarf for a pushback. We'll pull them all together, though. Lucius just absolutely burned through, burned through the dwarf. Chasing Tassie around to a sleep. Wow, very, very quick. So 15 million, 16 million. Soros doing quite a bit of damage there. 2952, so we have eight stages to chapter 30. 
This one is tough. This, this is where a couple of the teams were stuck just because of Athalia. Athalia is very, very difficult. But look at that. The Wilder team makes it look easy. 29-52 done just like that, which I believe ties us or that passes. So that gives the Wilders the lead from the faction account. Now we haven't run the Lightbearer account yet, but this is the lead. Look at the reigning, just the reigning spores. Two Floral Spectres up, doing a ton of damage with those Spectres. 21.5 million damage there. This brings us to 2954. This was the one a lot of players have said that they are stuck at this battle. Um, and have been stuck at this battle for quite a while. As you can see there, they absolutely just erased Iran in a matter of a second or two. Got the pull in dead. Wow. So this battle, let, let's swap, swap out, swap out um, Solus. We'll put in Lorzen, which Gorvo just absolutely stun killed everyone with his little jump stun. Let's try to peel some damage off here. Corvo is just destroying. That is crazy. We we don't even have a chance. I mean, Gorvo's like one, two hits, especially because Laika is providing the debuff, especially to Saurus. Let's try... Let's try Namora. Let's see if we can get a Beguile going on. And again, wow. We're lasting like 12 seconds in this battle. We're just getting destroyed. All right, so we're going to have to swap out. Nomura is not working with this team combination. Um, I, I really thought this one would work if we could get a little bit of healing or a little a bit of uh, crowd control. All right, so let's see. Let's swap in. Let's swap in our own Gorvo, which a little bit better. So, survived 12 seconds there. We just need him maxed. As you can see, he has a plus 30 signature item. We just need him up to Ascended. Um to really, really see how well he performs. I think if we had him at Ascended, it would be nice. Let's see, Almus. Again, Almus. Almus needs a wicked, wicked rework, as you can see there. Um, tried him a bunch of times. <laughs> Let's try him in the bottom position. He drops over, even back row drops over. All right, guys, so that will do it for the Wilder team. We pushed a crazy amount of progression here. Very, very cool to see the progression. So we pushed all the way past 52. So we are at 29-54. Wow. Gorvo, we did get maxed out. So there is the Mauler and the Graveborn team. As you can see, Wilder still, or the Light Bear still way behind there. But Gorvo, we got a max 30 signature item. Very, very cool to see. So let me know in the comments what you guys think. Very impressed with the progression. They take the lead until the Light Bears. So let me know in the comments what you think. And as always, thank you for watching.